Hello everybody, I am going to be talking about the mineral chromium today. I have to be honest, I didn't know anything about this mineral until I started researching it, and let me tell you, there is a lot of useful information about it. I didn't really know anything about any of the minerals, and I didn't know there were so many. So I hope you enjoy what I put together for you. Learning about chromium was very fascinating, especially its background. Chromium is known as a mineral, but is also known as a metal. On the periodic table, it is number 24 and has the abbreviation CR. The atomic mass is about 51.996, which rounds to 52. Chromium is called an essential trace element, which means there is a very small amount of it that is necessary for the human body. Chromium was discovered by Louis Nicholas Falkland while experimenting with a material known as the Siberian red lead. He produced chromium oxide by mixing crocodite with hydrochloric acid in 1797. Today, chromium is primarily obtained by heating the mineral chromite in the presence of aluminum or silicone. As you can see, chromium is a really pretty crystal-like mineral. Also, chromium is added to steel to harden it and to form stainless steel and steel alloy that contains at least 10% chromium. Other forms are used to make armor plates, safes, ball bearings, and cutting tools. While Vauquelin was analyzing this mineral, he also analyzed an emerald from Peru and discovered that its green color is because of the presence of the new element, chromium. The name chromium comes from the Greek word chroma, meaning color, so it got its name because of all the different colored compounds it displayed. In the mid-18th century, analysis of the Siberian red lead from Siberia showed that it contained a lot of lead. This was eventually known as chromium oxide. Chromium oxide was also discovered in 1797 by Vauquelin. Chromium was discovered in France in the late 1790s, but it took until the 1960s before it was recognized as being an important trace element. Chromium was used to prepare pigments including yellow, red, and green, color glass green, color rubies, red, and emeralds green, and in some tanning processes as a decorative and protective metal coating. Some people try chromium for body conditioning, including weight loss, increasing muscle mass, and decreasing body fat. Chromium is also used to improve athletic performance and to increase energy. Chromium also helps with digesting food. It exists in many natural foods, including brewer's yeast, meats, potatoes, especially in the skin, cheeses, molasses, spices, whole grain breads, and fresh fruits and vegetables. Drinking hard tap water supplies chromium to the body and cooking in stainless steel cookware increases the chromium content in foods. You can buy chromium supplements alone in tablets or capsules or as a part of a multivitamin, but because the body needs very little of it, most people get enough in their regular diet and don't even need supplements. Some of the chromium's other functions include the glucose tolerance factor which stimulates insulin activity, it controls the uptake of glucose by the muscle and organs, stimulates glucose metabolism, controls blood cholesterol levels, stimulates the synthesis of proteins, and surpasses hunger pains. Chromium is an essential mineral that plays a role in how insulin helps the body regulate blood sugar levels. Insulin is a hormone that your body uses to change your sugar, starches, and other food into energy you need for daily activities. Some evidence suggests that chrom chromium supplements may help people with diabetes lower their blood sugar levels. People with diabetes either do not make enough insulin or cannot probably use the insulin that their bodies make and because of that, glucose or sugar builds up in their bloodstream. My older brother Justin has type 1 diabetes, which means his body no longer makes insulin. When I asked him if he knew what chromium was, he replied with, I've never even heard of that. So that wasn't the answer I was looking for, but I found out how it played a role with chromium. As many as 90% of American diets are low in chromium, so it's rare to be truly deficient in chromium. People most likely to be deficient in chromium include the elderly, those who do a lot of strenuous exercise, those who eat a lot of sugary foods, and pregnant women can have low, little, low, low levels of chromium. It is also used to help treat high cholesterol levels, heart disease, depression, and anxiety. Certain medications may interact with chromium, especially when taken on a regular basis. Before taking any dietary supplements, you should always check with your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider. Some medications it helps with are antacids, corticosteroids, H2 blockers like 
nizotidin or famotidin, and proton pump inhibitors such as lazoprazole and epineprazole. These medications alter stomach acidity and may impair chromium absorption. Also, some other medications like ibuprofen and aspirin have their effects and if taken together with chromium, they may increase chromium absorption. In a recent episode, Dr. Oz suggested that chromium supplements may help women lose weight. Lots of people after this episode rush to buy chromium supplements in hopes to get a little extra help to burn some pounds. However, some people ended up buying the wrong chromium, and it's important to understand the difference between chromium polynicotinate and chromium picolinate. Dr. Oz suggested that chromium polynicotinate is made up of chromium and niacin, and it's believed that niacin can help to increase chromium's absorption. So women who tried the polynicotinate were able to lose weight combined with an exercise program. On the other hand, chromium picolinate is made of chromium and picolinate acid and is the most popular form of this mineral. It is an effective supplement against type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So that's why I was confused and my brother had never heard of it before because he has probably been taking some form of it. So be careful when shopping for chromium supplements because if you want to lose weight, be sure not to get the picolinate. Looking up myths about um, chromium was hard because I've never even heard of it. So I started researching it and I found some that interested me. Um, it's that leather is containing chromium and affecting people in a bad way. It has been a common knowledge for some time now that chromium can trigger allergies. In Germany, experts believe that more than half a million people are affected. A typical thing that was happening was people were getting eczema on their skin after having direct contact with chromium. They were thinking that chromium was in your clothing. In 2006, it was believed that work gloves was the cause of rashes and irritated skin. As no indication is given of the method used to tan the leather product, the, co the consumer cannot tell whether the product contains chromium or not. So they believe that leather goods that come into contact with the skin should not, if possible, contain any chromium. Um, a fact I found was that cinnachrome contains a combination of chromium and cinnamon nutrients which have shown to be useful for anyone needing to pay particular attention to their blood sugar levels. The combination of chromium and cinnamon makes a powerful natural formula ideally suited to all those following a low GL diet. Amounts of chromium are based on the dietary reference intakes from the Food and Nutrition Board at the Institute of Medicine. Researchers don't know what the safe and tolerable upper limits are for chromium. These are just some recommended dietary allowances that infants and pregnant women should be taking. Like I said before, usually people take chromium while they are pregnant. And these are just the recommended amount for adults, and it shows the amount daily they should be taking if they have low chromium levels. There are many precautions you should be aware of before taking chromium. Because of the potential for side effects and, inter and interactions with medications, you should take dietary supplements only under the supervision of a knowledgeable healthcare provider. Chromium from food is generally considered safe. As a supplement, very high doses of this mineral can reduce how effective insulin is at controlling blood sugar and cause stomach irritation, itching, and flushing. There have also been rare reports of fast, irregular heart rhythms and liver problems from too much chromium. Kidney damage has also been reported from the use of chromium picolinate supplements. There are some reports that chromium may make depression and anxiety or schizophrenia worse. Other reports suggest it helps depression. Ask your doctor before taking chromium if you have a mental health condition. People with chromate or leather contact allergies may be allergic to chromium. People with liver or kidney problems or people with amnia should not take chromium without first talking to their doctors. The chromium you get from foods is not the same as the industrial form of chromium that is absorbed by the lungs, digestive tract, mucous membranes, and skin. Industrial chromium is a toxic material. People are usually exposed to it either way it gets on their skin or when they breathe it in the dust. Rich sources of chromium include processed meats, broccoli, green beans, 
mushrooms, and whole grain products, particularly bran cereals. Refined grains have been shown to have less chromium content than whole grains. And if you need another reason to choose whole grain products, foods high in simple sugars have been shown to cause chromium loss. If you are interested in determining the chromium content in your diet, you should know that it is hard to measure the chromium in foods, so that information is not available for all foods. It is likely that you'll meet the recommended intakes just by including chromium-rich foods in your diet, especially because chromium is widespread in our food system. These are just some interesting facts I found out about chromium when I was researching it. Rubies get their red color from small traces of chromium. Some chromium compounds are considered poisonous. Chromium is often mixed with other metals to make alloys, which is a metal made by combining two or more metallic elements. One of the most important chromium alloys is produced when chromium is mixed with steel to make stainless steel. It is also used to produce super alloys with nickel that are used in jet engines. Because chromium compounds come in such a variety of colors, it has also been used as pigments in paint, and the most popular color made from chromium is yellow. Many school buses are painted in chrome yellow. Chromium is also found rarely as a free element in, the, in nature. It is mostly found scattered throughout the Earth's crust where it, has, where it is about 24th most abundant element. And this is the last slide with all of my resources that I used. Um, thanks everybody for listening and I hope you learned something. Thank you.